Hello students of dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker with another video talking about relative motion, in this case relative acceleration of a rigid body. Today we're going to look at a four bar linkage and how we can apply this beautiful equation to that four bar linkage. Now if you watched the previous video where I derived this, the only thing I've changed here, I've just changed the order of my tangent and normal. Uh, as an engineer, my brain likes things in order and I typically have things tangent, normal, tangent, normal, tangent, normal. So I've moved them into that order, right? Keep in mind, this is the relative tangent. I could also write this if I wanted to as my acceleration of A relative to B tangential as a vector, and this one over here, my acceleration of A relative to B normal as a vector. Okay, if you haven't watched that video, how this is derived, and you want to, take a look in the playlist in the text below. So let's go ahead and apply this system to a four bar linkage. I'm gonna, go, go, gonna draw this four bar linkage in gray, just so our vectors on top are quite visible. Now, for this one, instead of just having a pin, go ahead and extend the ground out, our surface here, all along the bottom of your page. Now, draw this fairly wide. I would draw this at least half the width of your paper, uh, if not wider, if you're taking notes on paper. So, here is one link. Here is another. I'm gonna stretch this out beyond 90 degrees. And then let's put, let's just go ahead and put a roller on here. Doesn't matter if it's a block, a roller. Um, and we'll think about that roller base is gonna, gonna, gonna stay horizontal along the surface. We'll call the pin over here, fixed axis pin point O. This connecting pin up here, we'll call that pin A. And then we'll call this pin right here in the middle B. All right, so you cannot start relative acceleration until you understand all of the absolute and relative velocity. Okay, that's just a key tenant uh, to working on relative acceleration. So these problems will give you typically both a rel excuse me, an absolute velocity, so an absolute velocity here of A, and they'll also typically give you an acceleration, sometimes the same body, sometimes different, commonly the same. And it turns out that with these two angular velocity and angular acceleration terms, and all of the geometry that exists in this problem, so all the length, the angles, everything else, that's all the information we'd need to solve for every single velocity term and every single acceleration term associated with the problem. All right, so let's walk through first using the instantaneous center of zero velocity approach, ICZVs. We're going to map the omega across this entire system. This is a one degree of freedom system. And so we can first look that our velocity at A is going to be perpendicular to that arm because we could draw a position vector from O up to A to find that velocity. All right, the next thing that we can do is we can think about uh, the line here upon which the velocity of B exists. Now, I don't know yet if it's going left or right. I think most of you could look at this and say, well, yeah, it's probably gonna be going left, but let's go ahead and go through this step-by-step -step in this mapping approach using ICZVs. So using these ICZVs, we're going to extend lines perpendicular to the velocities. So my velocity at A is perpendicular to this line. My velocity of B is perpendicular to that line. Serendipitously, my ICZV of body AB ends up right up here. So we, if we find that point, we then can also observe that in order to have a velocity VA, which is kind of going up to the left, that we need to have a omega of AB, which is negative from the right-hand rule, as you wrap your fingertips around with that arrow, put your fingernails along the arrowhead on your right hand, and your thumb should point into the screen. Now we also can draw this same omega on the arm itself. It's valid in either location. Keep in mind that this ICZV honestly acts kind of like creating a triangle out of this, what was previously just a linear member, right? That that's its pivot point, but this whole thing is moving with the same omega. 
All right, coming back to velocities. So if VA is going up to the left, my omega is negative from the right-hand rule, then that also validates that my VB has to be going to the left, right? And it has to be going to the left because as this, as this body AB sweeps to the left, then it has to pull VB with it. Okay, so that gives us our two angular velocities and two linear velocities. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and map onto here your relative velocity of A relative to B, let's draw this position vector. Right, so this is my R of A relative to B. We'll use that as well for our relative acceleration. You'll see it shows up here. It also shows up here. And so given that position vector, given this negative omega, put your fingers down, pointing down into the screen, curl them in the direction of that blue vector R A relative to B, and we would end up with a relative so our velocity of A relative to B pointing up to the right, or of course this is perpendicular to that R vector. All right, so those are things we've taught previously in videos. And so if any of that is foreign, uh, take a look at some previous videos in the playlist. All right, let's get into these acceleration terms. The process for locating the acceleration is really, really similar than it is for velocity. So let's start with our tangent terms. Okay, so if we have our omega and our alpha going in the same direction, then all of our tangent accelerations are going to be going in the same direction as our velocities, right? Because the velocities are 100% in the tangent direction. Now, if your alpha and omega were going in opposite directions, then all of your a sub t's, so this is going to be my a, a sub t, would be going in the opposite direction as your velocities, right? Similar to any other kind of motion we're defining with vectors. All right, so the next term here, we're looking at B, and so we would find out that our acceleration of B tangential is also horizontal, going to the left, because it is being accelerated, pulled over um, by, that, um, by that arm. One other thing to note here, that while we don't have the influence of our ICZV for accelerations, and let me expand on that, ICZVs are amazing for velocity. They work so well in helping us to not only get our head around the motion, but then also to be able to solve for what's going on. But let me go ahead and write this um, so it's all very clear, is that ICZVs do not apply for acceleration. So ICZVs, once again, that's the instantaneous center of zero velocity. There is no instantaneous center of zero acceleration. They do not apply for acceleration. We can use the velocities that come from that technique, but we cannot apply a similar mindset for accelerations. But one nice thing is, is that if we have these one degree of freedom systems, if we have our omega and our alpha going in the same direction on one body, it turns out that our omega and our alpha are going in the same direction on the other bodies as well. Okay, so that's a really key thing as you're mapping now these accelerations across, just like we mapped our angular velocities. All right, and so I think with that alpha also, you could see how that would also lend itself to seeing that this acceleration of B is gonna line up in the same direction as our velocity of B. Okay, so we have currently taken care of this term and this term. Got a bunch left to go. All right, so acceleration of A normal, right? Remember, that normal accelerations always go back toward the center of curvature. And so the center of curvature for body OA is 0. 0.0. And so this would be my acceleration of A you can write it A relative to O, point O isn't really moving. I was going to keep this as an absolute, which is a single subscript there, A. So my acceleration sub A, N. So that takes care of this one. Now my acceleration of B, take a look at point B. We know that accelerations are only needed to keep something moving in a curved path. Is point B moving in a curved path? Hopefully you answered no. If it is not moving in a curved path, we do not need a normal acceleration. Therefore, this term can go to zero. 
Okay, so it's very valuable to know which terms exist, which terms don't exist and need to go to zero. All right, so these last two terms here, these are the most difficult um, in this whole string, and they're both going to be based upon, here's the star of our show right here, this R vector is going to anchor both of these terms. All right, let's start with the tangential piece, alpha crossed with this R vector. Our alpha is negative, going, our thumb goes into the board as we wrap our fingers along, along alpha. So if we cross that into the screen, into the direction of that R vector, we end up with a relative tangential. Now I'm gonna to need to slide this vector over here um, below. So this is my acceleration of A relative to B tangential in that same direction up to the right as my velocity of A relative to B. Once again, also perpendicular to that blue um, position vector. And then the last term we have is the relative normal. Now keep in mind that both of these terms, if it is A relative to B, both terms will come out of point A. If you had B relative to A, you would flip around your R vector and your terms would come out of point B. Okay, so it just flips things around. And so let's go ahead and draw that position vector. Now we know that this is fundamentally in the opposite direction as this R vector, right? We said this is our anchor. So it's gonna come back here towards point B. That would be my acceleration of A relative to B normal. Now I didn't write all of my vector hats on here. Let me go through and do that real quick. But do note, these are all vector terms. Now you might be wondering, why did we do all of this work? Well, fundamentally, you're going to be solving for some of these different terms in on, on a numerical problem. And if you understand what these vectors look like, it's gonna help you a lot in writing these vectors out, taking your cross products, and then back checking your work, right? Say that you're solving for your alpha of AB. And in your numerical solving, you end up with a positive from the right-hand rule alpha AB, so that'd be in the positive K hat, you'll know you did something wrong because as you look at it fundamentally, given all of the structure of this problem, that alpha has to be in a negative direction. Now, the way that you'll solve for those unknowns numerically, and there'll be some examples that'll be coming up in future videos is essentially you're going to take this equation, this top equation here, writing everything out as vectors in xy components. Now the reason we use xy once again is a is moving along a path, b is moving along a different path, so we want to make sure we come up with an axis system that complements both of those and that we're gonna take essentially one equation will be all of the i hat or the x terms. The other equation will be all the j hat or the y terms. And so we can have two unknowns in this equation because we fundamentally can split it into an x version and a y version. Okay, so that's how we can map all of our velocities and our accelerations, both linear and angular, onto this four bar linkage. I hope that was really helpful and hope you're having a great day.